Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Last week we made a straightforward print under the enlarger. It was a print of an apple, a photograph I took on Ilford FP4 and developed in Dysactol. It's a nice photograph, I quite like it, but I think we can do better with this negative. So this week we're going to try to eke out some more detail and some better contrast from this image. And to do that, we're going to use split grade printing. Before we go on, I'd like to just explain how VC or multigrade papers work. So with VC or multigrade papers, I'm specifically getting this information from Ilford, so I'm not sure how the other companies do it. It's probably very similar. The, with Ilford, you have the paper base, and then above it you have three emulsions, lead. And these three emulsions react to light differently. All of them, one, two, three, react to blue light. Two of them react to green light in varying degrees. So if you shine blue light on this paper, all three emulsions will react and you will get high contrast. So blue makes high contrast. And if you shined green light on these three emulsions, you would get low contrast. Green equals low. Now, how does that work with our filters? Because our filters are not blue and green, are they? Well, with a color head, you use the yellow filter to adjust how much blue light passes through onto a sheet of paper. Remember, yellow blocks blue. That's why we put a yellow filter on our camera to increase the darkness of a blue sky. It blocks some of the blue from getting through. So the more yellow filter you add, the more blue you block, and therefore the more green you get in comparison, and therefore you get low contrast. And if you use a magenta filter, Magenta blocks green, but lets through blue. So the higher the magenta filter, the more blue gets through, and therefore the higher the contrast is. So magenta equals high contrast, and yellow equals low contrast. And it's the variation of these two colors in our filters that allow this paper to give you all of these contrasts. Now with a color head, you have an infinite number of contrasts from zero, zero right through to four and a half or, or grade five, depending on your color head. And with the filters that you can buy from Ilford, they will give you contrasts from zero, zero right through to five with half steps in between. They don't look yellow or magenta because they're a mix of the two. The filter mixes those two colors together to create the amount of blue and green to get the grade that you want. Grade two, for instance. So that's roughly, in a nutshell, how VC papers work. So it's good to understand that when you think about how we're applying this technique of split grade printing. Let's get back to the, to the enlarger and uh, check this out. Here's the photograph. And it's very nice tonality. There's some good blacks in it and some whites. So we've got a good contrast range uh, across the image. But I would like to darken some of the um, shadow areas a little bit more, but without losing the quality of the highlights, which are just spot on. They're lovely. They've got the highlighted, they've got whites, and yet there's also lovely detail just under that white area. So I don't want to lose that. If I increase the contrast to a grade three and a half or even a four under the enlarger, I'm going to increase the darks, but I'm going to lose that lovely detail that I'm getting in the whites. Now, if this was a landscape photograph, and so for instance, I had the sky at the top with clouds, and I wanted to increase the quality of the sky, it would be very straightforward to just dodge out the land and allow the sky to be burned in. 
That would be very straightforward and I could do that at a different grade. And of course that is one definition of split grade printing. But with an image like this, it's going to be very difficult for me to do any dodging and burning of the highlight areas which merge into these mid-tones or the shadows which are in all of these leaves. Very difficult to dodge and burn that. But there is a technique of split grade printing which will help me here. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Here I have a set of multi-grade filters and you can see it's the standard set. We've got just the zero through five on the left hand side and then all the half uh, grades along the right hand side. And what we would normally do, what I would normally do is uh, find the grade for the print and use that particular grade for the main exposure of the photograph. And then I would pick a different grade if I was going to burn in something. For instance, if it was the sky and I needed more definition in the clouds, I might use a higher grade, like grade four or even five, uh, burning in very slightly in the sky to increase the contrast in that area. Um, and of course, I could also do it to lower the contrast in a certain burned in area by using a lower grade. So there's lots of reasons I would use these filters two at a time, or maybe even more than two. But with this type of split grade printing we're going to do today, we can't do that with the apple. It's too difficult to dodge and burn. So what I'm actually going to do is ascertain which grades I like for the highlights and which grade I like for the shadows and do two independent exposures using one of those grades for the shadows and one of those grades for the highlights. Let's see how I ascertain how long each grade is used for this particular print. For this print, I'm going to be using grade zero and grade five, both separate exposures. Now the first exposure I want to calculate is how much to give of grade zero, how much of those highlights and that highlight nuance detail do I want to maintain. So I'm going to do my first test strip using just the grade zero filter. So let's put the grade five one down and I'll turn out the lights and we'll get our test strip paper and we'll do our test strip with grade zero. Now of course grade zero is a normal grade and when I mean normal grade, grade four and five use twice the length of time than a normal grade filter, zero through three and a half uses. So grade zero is going to be a much shorter exposure. Expect that when I see the results. So let me pop this into the enlarger and we'll have a look at making our test strip. I've got the enlarger set up exactly the same as last week. Height, f-stop, everything's the same. The only difference is I'm going to be using these Ilford multi-grade filters so that I can demonstrate more easily how I'm doing this. Let's switch off the lights, get a piece of paper in there and have a look how I do it. Here I am in the safe light. Um, here's my piece of paper that I'm going to make the test strip with. I'm going to position that around the top third of the photograph. That's where the apple is and I want to see that. That's an important part. That is the subject after all. I'm going to set five seconds on my timer and give five second bursts as I move the card across the paper, just the same as last week's test strip. Okay, I've got my card ready. Let's give it the first five seconds. Lovely, move the card over about an inch or inch and a half, another five seconds. And we'll continue moving it over and giving it a further five seconds. There, that should do her. Let's get that in the developer and have a look what we've got. Here is the grade zero test strip. And as you can see, it's very soft. That's what we would expect, isn't it? And on the left, this first five seconds, the image is starting to form. It's very light, very high tone, but it's starting to form after five seconds. At 10 seconds, we've got basically a complete image. 
if not underexposed, if I was going to make this into a photograph. 15 seconds uh, is good, and so on. We can see it going. With grade zero, with split grade printing, the way I do it, it's this area here that I'm interested in. Because I'm trying to increase, increase the contrast of the shadows and darken the shadows, but still maintain the nuanced highlights. Now, it looks very faint, doesn't it? And you'd think that would be not nearly enough exposure to give a print, to give these, these highlight details. But you've got to remember that with split grade, grade zero and grade five will add together. So there's additive exposure as well. It won't be, the highlights won't be just this faint. There will be some element of addition from the grade five. Not a lot in the very high tones, but as they darken, it will increase and increase. So I found that what I'm looking for in my grade zero test strip is where it first begins to show. It first begins to develop into an image. That's too much. That's about right. So first of all, I'm deciding that my zero exposure, my grade zero exposure on my print is going to be just five seconds. Let's do a test strip at grade five and see what we're looking at with that one. So as I say, this next test strip is going to be with my grade five filter. I'm going to put that in and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to make our strip using five seconds as our baseline. That's totally arbitrary. Five seconds, you could use three, you could use 10, but I find five's about a good average with my particular enlarger, my light source, etc., etc. So here we are, let's pop that in and I will now get my paper ready. Here's my test strip paper. Let's pop that under there, near the top, same area. And I'm gonna get my black card. Five seconds is set, and I've already got my filter in. Everything's ready, here we go. First five seconds. Second. Third. What we're going to find is that the grade five doesn't come in till much later in the exposure. There, let's get that developed and dried and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's my grade five test strip and you can immediately see the difference. First of all, it doesn't start to appear till later on in the exposure. And secondly, it's much more contrasty, look at that zinging contrast there, too much contrast. So what am I looking at here to work out my grade five exposure on my print? We've already ascertained grade zero is gonna be around five seconds. So how long for grade five? So first of all, it's going to be five, 10, at least 15 seconds, right? Because we're not getting any image here at all on these earlier ones. So at least 15 seconds, but look at 20. 20 is very attractive contrast. It's really quite nice. Um, I can have lovely dark shadows and I can see this uh, detail still in these shadows. Of course, the highlights are completely white. That's grade five for you. It's basically very black and white. If you're having to use grade five to print your negatives, you are not developing for long enough. There is something very wrong with your development. Looking here at 15 seconds, it's not bad. It's quite nice. I can see a lot of detail on the apple and there are some blacks, but this one catches my eye somewhere between these two. So I'm going to pick 17 seconds. Um, arbitrary, I could pick 18, I could pick 16, but somewhere between these two I'm, I'm going for. So I'm going to go for 17 seconds at grade five. So our print now is going to be five seconds grade zero and 17 seconds grade five. Let's do that print. I've set the enlarger up. I've checked the cropping of my picture. I've checked the focus. Everything is ready now for me to do my two exposures. So first of all, grade zero 
is in the filter holder and I'll give it five seconds. Very carefully, without moving the lens in any way, I want to take that grade zero out and pop in my grade five. And for that, we're giving it 17 seconds. Let me increase the timer. Seventeen, and here we go, grade five. Lovely. Let's develop that and take a look at it. Here is the print coming out of the wash water. She's looking fine. I'm going to dry this and show you what this looks like, but already she's looking much better. Okay, let's get this drying. Here is the grade three print again, so you can uh, compare the two. It's a nice print, there's nothing wrong with that. I'd be quite pleased with that print as it stands. But then when we do split grade printing, this is what we get. I want to hold them next to each other so you can compare the two. But I think you can see that the split grade print has brought out a whole three dimensional look to that image. It's really a beautiful image. It's also sharper and the detail is incredible. The detail on the apple. I mean, it sounds silly, but it looks like you can see every cell on the skin of that apple. It's so sharp and so detailed. This is the kind of detail that the developers can pull out of a negative, especially these really high performance pyro developers. Lovely, lovely photograph. The shadows are nice, the details in the shadows, the details in the highlights, but I wonder if I can focus so you can see that apple and every nuance in that apple is incredibly detailed. It's changed the photograph substantially. Now, I never used to do split grade printing. I was just a straight grade printing guy. But people asked for it and about a year ago I started focusing on it and trying to learn it and learn the best technique for me to bring this kind of detail out in a photograph. So that's what I've shown you today. It's not the only way to do it, I'm sure, but it's the way I've found I like to do it. And I really like the images that it produces. I've got to thank my patrons for allowing me to do that. And you must all thank the patrons because they're the ones who bring you this channel every week. So thank you guys so much. Next week, we're going to be looking at this photograph even more and doing some more work on it. So join me next week, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you then. Goodbye for now.